Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. And today, I'm going to show you guys how you can use Binance as a United States resident while you're in the US. So obviously, we're going to use a VPN for that. Now, as you might know, Binance is available in the states, but it is not available in all 50 states. States that Binance is unavailable in include Alaska, Oregon, Hawaii, New York, Texas, Vermont, Maine, and Washington. You will not be able to use Binance.com in these states. And you'll also be able to access Binance.us, not Binance.com. So Binance being available in these states means that a significant number of people in the United States can't use Binance in any form. However, a lot of people are now getting around this by using a VPN to connect to a server in a country where Binance is available and allowing them to continue trading without any restrictions. And why do you need a VPN for Binance? Well, thanks to the US regulations, Binance isn't available in the United States. If you try to use it inside the US, you'll either get an error or a blank site, or you'll be redirected to the US version of Binance, which is very different, as it only allows for roughly 150 cryptocurrency options, as opposed to the 500 plus options included in the main service. This pared down version isn't available in every US state, as I mentioned earlier, and it also charges higher fees than the full version. So if you're in the US and you want the full Binance experience, you will need a VPN. Now you want to be careful as to which VPN you want to use. So a lot of VPNs claim that they can access all sorts of content that's unavailable worldwide. But these websites end up finding out that a VPN is being used, and then you won't be able to access the site. So you really need a VPN with proper obfuscation, where the websites won't be able to tell that you're using a VPN. And that's why I picked these three right here, Express, Nord, and Surfshark. Also, if at any point you'd like to give any of these VPNs a try, you'll find discount links available in the description down below to help save you a little bit of extra money. Now, I don't want to log into Binance before I connect to the VPN. This is very important. And you want to use an incognito page. Or if you don't want to use an incognito page, I would suggest that you go to your settings, then go to privacy and security, then hit clear browsing data. You want to clear your browsing history, download history, any cache, and you want to clear the cookies as well. So once you've cleared all that, you can use the regular browser if you don't want to use incognito. But if you've already tried logging into Binance and you got Binance.us, I'd recommend using incognito mode at first, at least if you don't want to clear your cookies. Okay, so this is what happens if you're in the States. And I'm going to show this to you guys. Let's connect to a server in New Jersey. Here you'll see that Binance displays the limited version in New Jersey. Obviously, it'll be available, but not in full. So again, I would suggest that you don't connect to Binance before you use the VPN. Now, I'm not in the States, which is why I'm using a States server right here to show you guys that it'll actually redirect me to Binance.us. And you don't want to create an account with Binance.us. You want to select a country that's not the US, such as maybe Germany or Switzerland, where you have access to Binance.com for the full Binance experience. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and open up a new incognito window and disconnect from my VPN. Now, you want to connect to a server in Switzerland using ExpressVPN or Nord or Surfshark, whichever one. I'll briefly talk about these VPNs at the end of the video, but let me first show you guys how you can access the full Binance experience. Now that I'm connected to Switzerland, let's go ahead and see if we get any kind of restriction here. So it seems like it's completely available in Switzerland, and I believe it's also available in Germany and a bunch of other countries, just not in the States, unfortunately. So if you are a United States resident, you'll have a little bit of trouble. And once you have access to Binance.com while using the server in Switzerland, you want to register from Switzerland and you want to make sure that you're always connected to the same region. So if you register using a Swiss account and you create a Swiss account, make sure you're always going back or logging on to Binance with your account from Switzerland. Otherwise, Binance might detect that there's some suspicious activity going on and they might have to investigate you. Also, don't try to withdraw large amounts. When you're using a VPN, try to keep it small because if you want to withdraw bigger amounts, you might have to provide some identification for Binance. And if they ask you about your passport or your ID or something like that, and obviously you're not a Swiss resident, you're not living in the EU, and you don't have a Swiss citizenship or whatever region you picked for your VPN, you might get in a little bit of trouble. So you want to keep your withdrawals small so you don't have to provide identification. And you want to make sure that you don't log into Binance.us or open the US version of the website in the first place. And if you did, maybe use a different browser, use Firefox perhaps, or just incognito mode, i.e. something without any cash and cookies, if you already tried using Binance from the United States. And always connect to your VPN before accessing Binance. So yeah, that is very important and you should be good to go. 
Now, obviously, why did I pick these VPNs? Well, all three VPNs are very secure. They have strict no logs policies. There are verified independent audit reports to show that their server infrastructure and each of their no logs policies are as solid as they can be. And overall, these are just great VPNs. Of course, they all vary in budgets and features, so pick and choose depending on your specific situation and preferences. Okay, with ExpressVPN, you have over 3,000 servers in 105 countries, and you can see the country options right here. You also have basic security features such as the kill switch and split tunneling, and these can be very useful. The kill switch will make sure that when you disconnect from the VPN, it will cut your internet connection to prevent any leaks, so that the only way you're connected to the internet is through the secured server of the VPN, and split tunneling will allow you to choose which applications are routed through the VPN and which are not. So what you can do is, for example, if you want only your torrenting client or your browser to use the VPN, while the rest of your network is left intact or untouched by the VPN, you can do that with split tunneling. Of course, you have a handful of protocols to use, and Lightway is the best performing protocol. And with ExpressVPN, you'll be able to secure up to eight devices per subscription. Now with NordVPN, you've got over 6,300 servers in 111 countries. You have plenty of features with NordVPN, like a bunch of specialty servers, including dedicated IP and double VPN, and you have threat protection, which is like a mini antivirus, and you should definitely stick with using the Nord Links protocol. It's the best protocol, and you have a kill switch and an app kill switch. So the app kill switch will close selected apps when you disconnect from the VPN or the connection drops, rather than disconnecting your entire network as it is with the conventional kill switch. You've got split tunneling and an easy way to change DNS with custom DNS. With NordVPN, you'll be able to secure up to 10 devices per subscription. But if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly and the ability to secure an unlimited number of devices, then Surfshark is your go-to. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in 100 countries. It's very convenient and you can just share your account with as many people as you would like. All your friends and family can use the same account. And you still have multi-hop and static IP, which are the same as dedicated IP and double VPN. You have basic security features like Bypasser, which is the same as split tunneling. It's just called Bypasser. And you have Clean Web, which is an ad blocker. And you have a handful of protocols. Just stick with WireGuard. It's the best performing one. And again, you'll be able to secure an unlimited number of devices with Surfshark. So yeah, it's a very budget-friendly and convenient VPN. But again, if you're looking for the best of the best, just go with Express. And if you're looking for something that's kind of in between with more features, go with Nord. And if you're looking for the most budget-friendly one, go with Surfshark. That'll be all for today's video. Again, keep in mind, do not make huge withdrawals with Binance if you're using a VPN or they might ask for identification. That's one. Two, do not try to access Binance without being connected to your VPN first. And three, make sure to clear your cache and cookies if you're using Google Chrome. Otherwise, use incognito mode. But if you keep using incognito mode, they might be alerted and something could look suspicious to them if you're constantly logging in and you don't have any cookies or cache or anything like that. So I'd recommend you clear your cache, clear cookies, and then use the regular browser while using the VPN and never access Binance without using a VPN. And you should be good to go. So all these VPNs are covered by a 30-day money-back guarantee, by the way. So you can just try whichever one without any risk, really. And of course, there's 24-7 live chat support to help you with a refund or any other questions you might be having about these VPNs. Again, you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn more about these VPNs. And that'll be all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description to grab yourself the best discount possible. Like and subscribe to see more of these videos. And let me know in the comments if there's anything cybersecurity you'd like me to cover. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.